Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and because it's Monday, it's time for the Flicks of the Week. So after a week off, I'm here with some great picks across all major streaming services. This is a theater, a rental, a short film, as usual. So let's get right into it with my Prime video picks, starting with Afflicted. Now this is a movie I've talked about before, and it is in the horror genre. It's a little bit more of a like, it's a little bit more of an action movie if I'm being really honest. And the reason it's on the list, I'm gonna explain later in the video, but this is a found footage movie, and to me, I'm pretty tired of found footage. It's a pretty well-worn subgenre of horror. However, Afflicted manages to do something unique and different. In this movie, you follow a couple of guys doing a, I guess we'll call it a vlog, like a video journal of their travels overseas. Something happens to one of them and they begin to change. And the camera work is pretty unique in this one. And a lot of the sequences feel very real because of the found footage nature of the movie. Now my next two picks are also on Hulu as well as Prime, and then I'll give you another Hulu pick. But Mission Impossible Fallout just got added to both of them, and to me, I did a full review on this video right after having seen it. There's a link to that in the description. However, I feel like this is maybe the best one that they've done. It's not my favorite. My favorite has gotta be Mission Impossible 4 with the, the whole thing in Dubai was just unreal to me. Uh, I love that movie, it's, it's way more fun. This one's a little more serious, but I think it's one of the best written. It's one of the tightest, it's one of the more thought-provoking ones that they've done, and I think they did a really excellent job. Uh, really incredible, especially when you know how much work went into it, and the fact that Tom Cruise is not only flying the helicopter and hanging from the bottom of it, but they're actually doing some of the spins and crazy stunts that you're seeing in the movie. It just, it just makes it that much better and that much more convincing. My other pick that happens to be on both platforms is The Lincoln Lawyer. Uh, this has been around for a while. I think the movie's close to 10 years old now, but it's a great little McConaughey movie. This is before he did Dallas Buyers Club, before he was really kind of like seen as this really great actor, but he's been a great actor for a long time, and this is a really good crowd pleaser of a movie. It's a, it's a lawyer movie, obviously. It's got courtroom stuff, it's got investigative stuff, but Matthew McConaughey plays a really great character, and so does the rest of the cast. And like I said, it's a crowd pleaser, just in the sense that it's consumable, and I think most people will enjoy it. There's not a lot to dislike about this movie, so if you haven't seen it, uh, it, it makes for a great watch. And then exclusively on Hulu at this moment is Cruise. Now, I've talked about this one a couple of times on the channel, mainly because friend the show. Gino Caffarelli co-created this, co-produced it, he's in it, and he will likely be on the channel coming up in the future because he's also got a role in The Irishman coming out on Netflix in November. So look forward to seeing Gino on Flick Connection sometime in the next couple of months. But Cruise is a really great little summer of love movie that takes place in the 80s and it's got a really great 80s vibe and there's racing and there's, you know, the way I sort of describe this one is it feels kind of like a teen drama like a like a high school drama kind of a movie however it's very adult themed there's some fairly realistic sex scenes there's some crime there's some drugs there's some uh, a whole host of illegal activities and it, it really grounds this story and makes it feel very real and and that's the main reason I really dug this one on top of it just having kind of a cool soundtrack and an overall real kind of beautiful glossy look think think like kind of pretty and pink but that's like rated R and for adults only I, I dig that concept. Another one that takes place in the 80s is my shutter pick, Summer of 84. Now this movie came out just last year. It's about some kids that think their neighbor might be a serial killer. And there's all several movies that fall into this, but this one's pretty slick. It's got a Stranger Things vibe because it takes place in the 80s. You're dealing with teenagers and they're on their bikes and they're investigating it. Again, sounds kind of like a kid's movie, but it's got rated R elements in it, it's 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 not brutal, like anybody can watch it, it's not gonna completely like terrify you, but it is a fun watch, it's engaging, it's a little bit of a hidden gem, it, it kinda made the rounds last year, but I know a lot of people missed it, you can check it out right now on Shudder. Holy. Need help, sir?
The Mule is on HBO. It's the latest film from Clint Eastwood. Came out last holiday season, and I like this one a lot. It, it's possible it's the last time Clint Eastwood stars in one of his movies. Uh, he doesn't have many movies left in him, maybe just a handful, and he doesn't tend to be in his movies that often. Maybe we'll get one more, but if this is the final one that he's going to be in, uh, it's a good one for him. He plays a great character, a complicated character, uh, not a particularly likable character at times, but it works so well. This is based on a true story about an elderly man who ran drugs for the cartel. Uh, and Clint Eastwood, his storytelling style is just fairly honest. Like, he's not doing anything overly flashy or dramatic. He's just telling this story kind of the way it needs to be told. Bradley Cooper has a great role, as well as some other faces that you see a lot. They're, everyone's great in this, and it's just an all-around good movie. Not necessarily one of the best from 2018, but, but close. Unleashed is a great action movie from I think the mid 2000s. This stars Jet Li, Morgan Freeman, has a fairly small but a great role in it. Bob Hoskins as a bad guy and Jet Li plays basically a human dog. He's an attack dog, he's an enforcer, he's just a, a rabid animal, caged animal that Hoskins unleashes on his enemies uh, and he's sort of discovered by Morgan Freeman who plays a blind man and is sort of like basically broken like trained or sort of like rescued like an abused animal and so you get this incredible action movie with a lot of just wild fight sequences but also this really sort of like heartfelt story as well that gets wrapped up in it at the same time just an overall cool flick that i really liked a lot when it came out and it's been a while since i've seen it all right now two recommendations on cinemax this week and it's house of a thousand corpses and the devil's rejects and the reason i'm recommending those two is because the third movie in rob zombies trilogy comes out next week supposedly on the 16th i think it might get a rollout it may only be in some cities then nationwide but this is a highly anticipated horror trilogy. Both of these movies did really well. They've got a really intense fan base and they're really well done, particularly The Devil's Rejects. It's a really well crafted horror movie, an unusually well crafted horror movie. And hopefully Three From Hell, the name of the third one, is better than Zombie's last couple of flicks. Uh, I think it probably will be because he's got really good source material to work with, but you got this week to catch up on these two movies on Cinemax and then go check out the other. I will likely be doing some sort of a review or something on, on the channel, so stay tuned for that. And if you're new here, definitely go ahead and click that subscribe button and be sure to click that little bell icon so you get notified when I put out new videos just like this one. Stop making that face, that's offensive. What? This is how I feel inside. <laughs> now, on Netflix, I'm recommending Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones. Now, this has gotten a lot of heat in the media and a lot of bad reviews. It actually had a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes until my boy Jeremy Johns gave it a positive review and broke the seal. Now it's doing a little bit better, but I, I honestly gotta say, and it's not just coming from me, other comedians are saying this as well. Comedians other than Dave Chappelle are talking about how genius this one is. The thing that's such a shame is he really talks about some real stuff and he makes it funny. He is so funny. I think this is some of his best work. I think it's some of his smartest work and People have a problem with it because he makes a couple of trans jokes, but I gotta tell you, this is, this is, I think, top notch in terms of a comedy special. It's hard to get much better than this, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. If you've never been a fan of his, I would assume you're probably not gonna like this either, but if you've liked his stuff in the past, do not miss this one. And then to switch it up, also on Netflix is Ark. This was an early early Netflix original movie. It's a sci-fi thing. It's got a made-for-TV vibe. It all takes place in one house. Very low budget vibe, but they did a great job with the budget. It deals with time travel, so you keep kind of revisiting the same moment over and over again, and it works. This has got a great little story. To me, it feels kind of like a short film, but it is 90 minutes. They fill the time well, but it's, its concept is fairly small. But this is one of the first Netflix originals I ever watched, and I thought it was pretty promising. Um, so if you, if you missed it because it's gotten since, you know, Buried under all the ones they've been releasing, look for ARC, and that's spelled A-R-Q. 
And then my show of the week might be a little bit of a cop out, but it's a very good reason it's this week. It's Breaking Bad, which you can also catch on Netflix. I recommend re-watching it because in five weeks, a Netflix original movie called El Camino comes out, which is what follows the finale of Breaking Bad, which was one of the most anticipated finales in TV history. Now there's a movie with the cast returning to tie up loose ends and tell what happened to some of the characters afterwards. Highly anticipated Netflix original movie. You've got just enough time to binge watch all five seasons. If you've never seen it, it really is one of the best shows ever made for television, particularly one of the best crime shows. If it's been a while since you've seen it and you've got the time to spare, you might as well rewatch it before El Camino drops in October. Chloe! What are you doing? Someone could have seen you. You love the punishment for breaking the rules. No, Dad! You opened the door. You almost got us killed. Okay, and then my theater pick of the week explains why Afflicted is on the list because it's created by the same directors as Afflicted. It's called Freaks. Now, this stars Emil Hirsch, and the trailer's pretty wild. As far as I can tell, the less you know about this one, the better, but he seems to be like an overprotective father or he's suffering from delusional paranoia, doesn't let his daughter go outside, but it's hard to tell from the trailers. Is there really something outside? Is there really something incredibly dangerous outside or is it in his head? It looks like it's a cool flick. It's getting a national release this week. It's the only thing I'm interested in seeing in the theaters this week. So if I get a chance to see it early enough, I'll do a review on this channel, but don't count on it because I got a huge Netflix list coming up later this week. So stay tuned for that video for sure. What do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. My rental of the week is John Wick 3, and I did a full podcast episode on John Wick 3. I really liked it when I saw it in the theater, but the first time seeing it in the theater, I didn't realize how superior it is to the previous John Wick movies. It is so much better in so many ways, just in terms of the action. It's so intense, the action sequences are prolonged almost too long at times, but that's a hell of a complaint to have about a movie. Really, really great action sequences, particularly at the beginning. It just feels nonstop at the beginning and I absolutely loved it. I've watched it twice since seeing it in the theater once. Uh, it's definitely gonna make my top 10 movies of the year and you can rent it starting Tuesday this week. My short of the week is a sci-fi short called The Gift. This features an android and an, a chase sequence on her motorcycle. It's a lot of fun. It is fairly short, incredible graphics, incredible action. Uh, this director went on to do big budget movies after this, uh, including one with Keanu Reeves, but uh, that's how good this one is. Check this one out. And I'll be back soon with some other recommendations that are maybe a little lesser known than this one. All right, and then my video of the week is actually my live stream from last week. It's me, friend of the show, Becca Buckaloo, and Najara Townsend, who you might recognize from Contracted and some other movies that I've recommended in the past. Those two ladies joined me for uh, sharing facts about movies. We shared facts with each other that the other two didn't know. It was a lot of fun. Uh, check it out if you're into it. It's, it's a, you know, gonna provide a, like an hour of entertainment. So check that out. I got more content like that coming soon. So be sure, like I said, have that notification bell, check the community tab. I'll always let you know when stuff like this is coming out so you can actually join us when we do something live. If you'd like to support the show, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. These are the folks that are donating five dollars and above there are some other folks donating three and one dollar every little bit helps it's helping the channel grow it's helping me do more with the channel it's also helping me bring you some content on the Darren Van Dam channel there's a link to that in the description it's been a long time since I put anything there but I got stuff coming very very soon I promise I'm working on it but that is it for this episode I'll keep making episodes like this as long as you keep watching them but thanks for checking this one out and you will see me on the next one